So when it comes down to who's left to fight in Ragnarok, there's only three fighters from the gods that we've yet to actually see appear, and they are Anubis, Apollo, and Susanoo no Mikoto. And it just started to beg the question here, out of these three, who will be the first one to fight? And there's no right or wrong answer here, guys. I just wanted to make the prediction here for the sake of discussion, but out of these three, I feel like you can make a solid case for either one. But what's also caught my attention is it's very clear how the manga shifted focus to Helheim ever since round six right? And I won't be getting into any spoilers about the end to round 7 since we're still waiting on the translations, but if we're still gonna keep this trend of getting more lore on Helheim, then we just have to talk about Susano and Anubis. And I want to start with Susano here because this is going all the way back to chapter 50 when we first got Helheim introduced to us. It says, Across all mythologies is the common theme of a three-layered world, the world where gods and the souls of the dead dwell Valhalla or heaven, the world where humans and animals live Midgard or the earthly world, and one more layer known as hell, the demon world, and Nenokuni, the land of origins, among other names, the world where unearthly things crawl, Helheim. And as far as anything Susano related goes, this is the most that I think we've gotten so far in the manga. Because if you look at what Nenokuni, the land of origins is, it's actually where Susano lived according to historical Japanese mythology. But depending on your sources and where you're getting them from, and the different Japanese to English translations that are currently available, this means there's ultimately more than one version on Susanoo's relationship to the netherworld. For example, it's said he came to actually be the ruler of the underworld himself after being banished there by his father Izanagi. But in another version of the same story, it's said he simply went down to live there with his mother and the true ruler of the underworld Izanami. And this isn't the only example where it's unclear what the actual mythology is. There's also another story where one of the big Shinto gods named Akunanushi went to escape from being murdered murdered by his brothers into the underworld where Susanoo currently ruled. But in another version of the same story, it said Akunanushi had fled from his brothers into the underworld and just took refuge at Susanoo's home. And I don't really want to make this a history lesson, but all of this can be easily explained by the different origins of Japanese mythology, predominantly the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki. But the bigger picture I want to get across to you here is just how relevant Susanoo is to the current timeline. And I'm not implying he'll fight in round 8, but if round 8 manages to keep this trend going of building more and more lore on Helheim, then I think Susanoo's chances of even appearing before Anubis and Apollo are pretty reasonable. And again, I really don't want to make this a history lesson, but when it comes to Anubis, the lines are probably more easier to draw to Helheim here than Susanoo's, right? Of course, this is because Anubis being a more well-known god, it's easy to associate him with the underworld given his role as a god of the dead. And regardless of how many creative liberties we see the manga take when it comes to you know, fleshing out each and every historical figure, I still think it's like the story has no choice but to make Anubis an underworld god, no doubt. And if that's going to be the case, then it just makes just as much sense as Susano for Anubis to appear before the other two, I think. But what also helps me believe this is actually Nostradamus. Because given that Nostradamus seems like a potential candidate for round 8, then by default, it would mean more exposition on Helheim once it's explained why Nostradamus was the only human sent there as punishment. But but even if Nostradamus doesn't fight in round 8, I think if we could even just get Helheim exposition going from round 6 to 8, then it just betters the chances of seeing either Anubis or Susanoo fighting sooner than Apollo. But if we're talking about current trends in Ragnarok, one of the most obvious ones to mention is clearly the amount of Greek fighters that we've already seen fight. And now with the return of Adamus, it's like the likelihood of seeing another Greek god step into fight has just gotten way more higher to the point I think even Apollo or even Adamus could probably fight as soon as round 8. Now, whether or not that's actually what you want to see is a different discussion, but if you just look at how many gods have fought in Ragnarok already, you'll notice that 4 out of 8 are from the Greek pantheon, meaning there's statistically and evidently a 50% chance Apollo could fight in the next match based on the past 7 rounds, which is more than I could say for Anubis or Susano. Especially after round 7, where we got so much world building done in Hades' backstory, it'd actually be a smoother transition to go from Hades Hades to Apollo than any other god. But I'm gonna be honest, I just don't see it happening, right? I mean, it just looks like round 8 is set up for either Loki or Beelzebub, but if we're talking about the three unknown fighters, Anubis, Apollo, and Susano, then I think you can reasonably expect Apollo to even just make a character appearance before we even hear the name Anubis or Susano mentioned in the story. But alright guys, that's gonna be where I'm gonna end the video. Thank you so much for watching. I know this one's a little on the short side, but I hope you all enjoyed it and 
please feel free to comment down below what you think. I'm curious to know if anyone else even wondered about these three. But before I end the video, I want to give a very special thanks to the channel's first Patreon, Iron. Thank you so much for your support. And for anyone wondering, I just recently opened up a Patreon where if you're interested, you can also sign up and get into this monthly Q&A I'll be doing now. I should be posting the first one sometime at the start of July. So from now until the end of June, feel free to consider joining. You'd also be helping me out here in a massive way and get a special shout out like this in every single video. The link will be in the description down below, or you could just search it yourself at patreon.com slash izanami. But other than that, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, feel free to comment down below what your thoughts are, anything you agreed or disagreed with. And if you're interested in more record of Ragnarok, then make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more videos here on the channel like always. And yeah, have a great day.